Wacom devices come with an application that you can find on the official website. It both contains the tablet's driver and it allows you to change your device's parameters. To change your tablet's options, from your computer you have to open the Wacom Tablet Properties panel. There, you can find three things at the top. First, you have your connected devices. I have an Intuos 4 and I have a Cintiq 13-inch HD. Then, in the tool row for the selected device, you can change either the parameters of the stylus, here it's the Pro Pen, or you can change the key bindings assigned to the express keys or the function keys, that is to say, the buttons on the side of your drawing surface. And the third row allows you to create a different profile for a variety of applications. For instance, if you want different keyboard shortcuts, both on your stylus's button and on the function keys in Photoshop or in Krita. The bottom area is where you will find all of the parameters for the selected tool. The first option we are going to change is the screen ratio. In the tool row, select the stylus and go to the mapping tab in the bottom part of the window. In this tab, you can change the orientation of your tablet if you are left-handed right-handed or if you have a vertical screen you want to use it with. You can change the mode as well between pen and mouse. To draw you'll have to use the pen mode. In pen mode, when you place your stylus somewhere over the drawing surface, the mouse cursor automatically gets mapped to the corresponding position on the screen. In mouse mode, however, that's not the case. It works like a mouse. That is to say, when you move over the surface, you drag the mouse cursor and the mouse cursor stays in place until you drag it again. But with some apps, not all of your tablet's features are supported in mouse mode, so you'll have to stay in pen mode. Also for drawing, the pen mode is just like drawing on paper. That is, you draw somewhere on the sheet, it draws in that position. The mouse mode is relative to where your cursor was, so you're going to make a lot of mistakes if you want to draw in that mode. The screen area, we are going to leave it at full so that our tablet surface represents the entire screen. And then we are getting to the false proportions checkbox. This is very important. You have to activate it. This option forces your tablet to reduce the detection area so it has the exact same proportions as your display. If you leave it unchecked, you can draw using the whole surface of the tablet but your input strokes will be squashed slightly on the computer. This is a big deal. If you don't fold proportions, your strokes will always be a bit deformed. I also invite you to deactivate Use Windows Ink in the bottom left corner. Windows Ink adds some features to touch-based devices, like the ability to right-click if you hold the pen down. We don't want to have that, so deactivate it. Next up, we want to change the pen parameters, so click on the corresponding tab. There are a few things we can change in there. First of all, we have the tip feel, that is the pressure sensitivity of the tip. You can also change the tilt sensitivity if your tablet supports it, and you can change the bindings of the buttons on the side of the stylus. Let us start with the side buttons. You can leave the default options if you want, but note that I have the right mouse click on the top button and the middle mouse click on the bottom one. The right click allows me to access the options in drop down menus and the pop up palette in Krita. And the middle mouse click is for panning. Now we have a very important parameter to tweak, which is the tip's feel or the pressure sensitivity. It changes the feel of your stylus, but also the rate at which you will wear your tip and your drawing surface as it changes the pressure you need to apply to get a certain effect with the stylus. I recommend to get used to a soft pressure feel. It will make brushing easier on your wrist and it will still give you all the nuances you need to do your work with a bit of practice. You can leave the pressure curve alone as it's quite limited in the driver and Krita provides a better pressure curve editor which we will look at in a moment. Note that you have a bar showcasing the current pressure on your stylus so you can try it out for yourself when you are changing the parameters. In the eraser tab you can also change the feel of the eraser. 
But honestly, I never use it. I use the E keyboard shortcut to switch between the brush and the eraser in Krita all the time, and in any drawing application, actually. On top of the two buttons on the side of your stylus, you have a few buttons directly on your tablet called the Express Keys. You can add key bindings to them, but I recommend using your keyboard instead, as the Express Keys are too limiting, you just have a handful to work with. I'll show you how I arrange my devices on my desk in a moment. You can also work with both a Cintiq and an Intuos tablet at the same time, using the Cintiq stylus. Or rather, you can keep both connected and change your setup depending on what you are working on. For instance, here I use the Cintiq primarily for line work and the Intuos for painting jobs. I told you that you can change the pressure curve in Krita. Uh, let me show you how. In the application, go to the settings menu and then to configure Krita. You have to click on the tablet settings icon on the left column. Then you can see a curve. The horizontal axis corresponds to the input pressure and the vertical axis corresponds to the output pressure. This is the exact same curve editor you will find anywhere else in Krita, be it in the filters or in the brush editor. If you click and drag anywhere in the graph, you will add a point which will allow you to edit the curve. If you pull the curve down, it will make it harder to reach full pressure, but it will give you more room to play with low pressure levels. I really don't recommend that. On the other hand, if you push the curve up, it will make you reach higher pressure levels faster. If you move the first and the last control point respectively on the graph, you can change the pressure range that Krita will use. Also, if you want to remove a control point, you have to drag it outside of the window. Just click on the OK button at the bottom of the window to validate your changes. To wrap up the video, let me show you how I place my tablets on the desk to use with the keyboard. In the case of a regular desk tablet, the Intuos, it's simple. I simply put it right in front of me before the keyboard. I draw with the right hand and I leave my left hand on the keyboard to do keyboard shortcuts. With the Cintiq, it's trickier. The device takes quite a bit of space on the desk and the cable is both thick and rigid. Ideally, you want to have a rolling flat tray under the desk with your keyboard on it. I don't have that. So I put my keyboard right behind the Cintiq, just like that. That's it for this video and for chapter 0. Now we have everything we need to get started learning Krita's drawing tools.